Hi, uh, my name is Emilian. I'm from Indonesia. So actually, I was a tenured lecturer at Water Resources Engineering Department at Imbrawija University, Indonesia. So I've been working there since since 2014, and I have a background with a, as a coastal engineer with a master's degree from University of Miyazaki, Japan. And my focus is in coastal morphological modeling. My name is Uwe Best and I am from Guyana. It's a country along the South American coastline. And I'm a civil engineer with a specialty in coastal engineering. Um, and my specialty was actually gained right here at IHE Delft in one of the MSc programs, coastal engineering and port development. I chose IHE to pursue my PhD because I know that the coastal engineering group research at IHE is very well known for its expertise in coastal modeling. So I know some of the, their models, such as Dela 3D, XBeach, and also the latest and the four for my, for my promoter, Professor Daniel Rolfing. He also developed this newly model called JNS. So that's why I would like to do my PhD at ICB. During my MSc research, I was fortunate to be able to work on the coastal dynamics along the Guyana coastline. But even before then, I worked as a civil engineer with the ministry in Guyana. And it's there that I really developed a passion for coastal engineering. So my research will be the mangrove mudflat dynamics in a progressing delta. So it is actually, I would like to study the interaction between mangrove and mudflats by developing, by developing a coupled model with the individual base mangrove model, which is actually modeling each trees. So I can track and detect for their growth, their interaction between mangroves and also with the landscape development. And why did you choose Parang as your research location? Okay, so Porang is quite important in my country because in May 2006, there was a volcanic mud eruption there. So it is even considered as the largest mud eruption in the world. And because of that disaster, so like more than of 60,000 people have to be evacuated from, the, mm -hmm. from that area because like a lot of mud have, been, have inundated that area. So they have to move. And my government, the government of Indonesia, they have to build like a diversion structure to divert the mud from that particular area to the nearest river because if they don't divert that low, the mud flow, the, the area will be much more inundated. Okay. So they created some kind of uh, diversion structure and they flow the mud into the river. Uh, because of that, so we see that the rapid development of delta in the downstream. And one of the effects of that diversion is we see the growth of the mangrove. Mm. And it is nice because the data set on mangrove, mud flat and sediment transport, I mean, sediment flow, it is quite scarce in, in our area, in our subject, in our research. So with that kind of disaster, I found that the government have like almost 12 years of observation so that I can make use of that observation to build my model and then to analyze the interaction between mangrove and mudflats. We should be able to analyze what will be the future of the delta so we will have less impact to the people live nearby. Right. That was my next question was yeah. what do you hope is the benefit of your research to the area but also to the contribution to the SDGs? Okay, so locally by having this kind of analysis so I can show to the government so this will be the future of the forum. But in the other hand, I can also uh, deliver so I can also uh, give some kind of contribution to community that I have a working model with the interaction of mangrove and mudflat and they can use that model to assess the location or to analyze what or to quantify the interaction between mangrove and also the landscape in their particular study area. So it is not bounded in, in Indonesia, you can use it for every location. Okay. Thank you. Can you explain why mangrove conservation through restoration is so important for your country? Definitely Ruth, and I think it's a really good question. Uh, so contrary to the sandy coastlines that 
we're most familiar with along uh, several beaches, whether it's in the Netherlands or within Europe. Guyana's coastline is uh, developed by these massive mud banks, which are about 20 kilometers wide, then they move along shore. And whenever these banks are in front of an area, you have the coastline becoming stable and prograding. But in their absence, you have a lot of erosion. And this increased erosion is usually what instigates the loss of the mangroves. And so when you talk about mangrove restoration, you have to look at the benefits of it. Ghana's coastal area is flat. It's below sea level. And so it's vulnerable to sea, sea level rise, but it's also quite an essential area because we use it for agriculture. Our capital city is there, our ports are there. And so when managing the use of such a valuable and vulnerable area, you really have to have an understanding of what are the, of what are the processes governing the overall uh, development of that area. And so the use of mangroves allows us to step beyond the whole the line approach that several hard structures usually en encompass and it allows for us to not only advance the coastline but also reclaim several areas that have been lost to the Atlantic Ocean. So the question really isn't why do we use or want to restore the mangroves but more so how we can integrate them properly within the coastal strategies. Great, very interesting. And what is your own research hoping to achieve? Well, thank you for the question. So my research is actually twofold. It hopes to first assess the mangrove dynamics with regards to sea level rise and increasing waves. Um, and also to really look at how effective the combination of hybrid approaches are with with regards to coastal protection. For example, in Guyana, we use the seawalls with the mangroves, and in other countries, they combine the mangroves with offshore breakwaters. And so looking at the effectiveness of such combinations, I really feel would add uh, a great value to the discussion on, on how we can include uh, the mangroves within coastal protection measures. And interestingly, both of you are doing your research into mangroves yeah. and I imagine that you collaborate to a certain extent. Can you explain a little bit more about the link between, if there is one, between your two pieces of research? So, wonderful question, Ruth. Uh, these are indeed different projects. They're in different parts of the world, different mangrove species, different situations that resulted in, in, in us focusing on them. But definitely the overall idea is that we need more monitoring, we need more data to be collected and it's only with that that we can improve the message that is being uh, carried out on protecting and conserving the mangroves. Great. And also by collecting some data sets we also develop a models. So we are developing a transit models which is actually trying to solve the processes. But in my project, I am actually developing a landscape models which is actually can solve the interaction between mangrove and uplands.